Okay, still talking about extrinsic control of blood pressure. So we said, we talked about the ways in which the nervous system can control blood pressure, um, the ways in which hormones can control blood pressure, and now we're going to talk about the ways in which the kidney can control blood pressure. And not surprisingly, the kidney control of blood pressure is a lot about just how much you pee out versus don't. So this is mostly long-term control. Of course, this is not going to have immediate impacts on your blood pressure, like for instance, vasoconstriction or an increase in heart rate, so longer term. So the kidney has the ability to directly alter blood volume um, and therefore blood pressure by um, excreting or conserving sodium and water. But the indirect mechanism is called the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, or sometimes RAS system. So it sounds really confusing, but this figure that one of my students found for me last semester is just fantastic. So here's the deal. It's a negative feedback inhibition system that uh, occurs when the kidney detects low blood pressure. Okay. So if the kidney detects low blood pressure, it's going to initiate this little bitty cascade that will basically result in increasing blood pressure. So here we go. Okay, so low arterial blood pressure, yes, is detected. Low blood pressure is detected by specific kidney cells called juxtaglomerular cells, and they're in the kidney, and you may have learned about them because they're part of the juxtaglomerular apparatus. And what happens is when those juxtaglomerular cells detect um, low blood pressure, they will secrete this en enzyme called renin into the bloodstream. And renin in interacts with a, an inactive protein that's in the plasma that comes from the liver called angiotensinogen. And renin converts angiotensinogen from the liver to angiotensin 1. And angiotensin 1 doesn't really do very much until it interacts with this inactive thing that's always around 2 called ACE, or angiotensin converting enzyme, that comes from the lungs of all places. That's why I didn't want to tell you that angiotensin 2 came from the kidney, so it had an asterisk. And then the big picture understanding is all of this gets me to angiotensin 2, which is where I was trying to get. And angiotensin 2 does two things. First off, it is the most powerful vasoconstrictor in the body, and that will bump up your blood pressure. And then second, angiotensin 2 causes the adrenal cortex to release aldosterone, and then aldosterone goes back to the kidney and causes sodium and water retention. Okay, so big picture understanding is, um, one more time, let's go through it one more time. If you detect um, low blood pressure or low blood volume at the kidney, then these cells called um, juxtaglomerular cells will release renin. And renin is um, released only in response to that. Renin will interact with a protein that is always there but not active called angiotensinogen that's always in the bloodstream and it's from the liver and convert it to angiotensin 1. And then angiotensin 1 will interact with something that's always there too called ACE. So note to self, angiotensinogen and ACE are always there but they don't have anything to do with one another unless renin is present and gets angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Okay. And then ACE converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 has a direct impact, which is causing vasoconstriction, systemic vasoconstriction, to bump up the pressure. And then it also causes the release of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex, which causes sodium and water retention. And this is the RAS system, the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Okay?